<laughs> hey guys, thanks Courtney for that warm welcome. Um, okay, so yes, this is going to be a panel on artists and collector, or, yeah, artists and collectors, and the opportunities that are available for them or avail going to be available for them uh, within the salon ecosystem and beyond. Um, the structure will be, I'll have the panelists introduce themselves, um, your names, your roles, what projects you're with. Um, then I'm going to make a brief and very exciting announcement um, on what's very imminently upcoming for the Solana ecosystem. So that'll be great. And then we'll dive into the meat of the panel. So Jerome. Hello. Uh, lovely to be here. My name's Zach Jerome. I'm the founder and head curator of CODA, Curations of Digital Art. Hi guys, I'm Kari, aka Bangers, um, and I am a founder and an artist in the space. I started off in Web2 as an artist. I was a creator on Instagram, and I grew a large social presence, and then I kind of realized that Web2 was the absolute worst, and moved over to Web3, where I'm now building the platform that I you know, want for myself as a creator. It's called Three Lands, and yeah. Hello, I am Larissa. I'm running Exchange Art, the fine art marketplace on Solana. Really happy to be here. Awesome. OK, so before we dive into the panel, uh, we have some very exciting news as a foundation. So the Solana Foundation is going to actually be sponsoring Art Basel this year in Miami. We're going to be bringing projects, creators from the ecosystem with us. Um, as you know, the Solana ecosystem is incredibly vibrant. It's an international and global community, and uh, we really want to try and support those who are building on Solana and creating in this space. Uh, so yeah, we're really excited, and uh, stay tuned. We'll, we'll have more uh, on social. Oh my god, I was nervous people weren't going to clap. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> We're, yeah, I love the energy. We're also super excited. Um, OK, so without further ado, let's dive into the panel. Um, first things first, we wanted to cover what opportunities there are from artists in the ecosystem. Each of you have really unique takes on what it means to be a creator in Web3 and artist in Web3, specifically in Solana. Um, so I'd love for each of you to touch on what your project offers uniquely and what your perspective offers uniquely in the way of artists, opportunities that they can expect and beyond? I know it's a bit of a broad question to start, so. <laughs> it's a lot. A lot there, a lot. Um, so yeah, CODA, Curations of Digital Art. Uh, we've been hosting ex virtual exhibitions over the last year. This weekend is the anniversary of CODA, which is Amazing. an honor. We've also been able to have a real life exhibition here, uh, which hopefully some of you guys have seen in the community base camp. But basically, what we do at CODA is help artists really connect with the collectors on a different level. You know, going to some events and, and some exhibitions myself, I saw how important it was for really to make the connections between collectors, artists, and, and making friends. So we kind of, we, we, we strive to provide that space that people can really share a bit more about themselves rather than just seeing art on a screen, basically. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, my project, Three Lands, we're also, we have digital spaces, like 3D digital worlds. So I think events are a really great, a really great way to get artists together with collectors and have kind of like a meaningful discussion about art. So I think, I think that's something that's really important that like I strive to do in this ecosystem is create like platform for artists to like speak and kind of like discuss and give artists like opportunities to express themselves and really dive into what what they do as an artist like right what makes them unique because i think like what we're doing here you know as like a community of artists and collectors is like it's just that like it's a community and it's about the relationships and the friendships between artists and collectors. So being able to really like discuss like that and connect, I think, is super important. Um, and that's kind of like another thing that my experience like as an artist in Web2, we didn't really have a community. Like I think Web3 does create opportunities for artists, and a big one of them is like the collaboration that artists can come together on a shared smart contract and you know, build, work together, create a piece together, and you know, be equally rewarded. 
And so together we've kind of created this ecosystem that is so supportive and it's filled with friends. And that's something that I didn't have in Web2 when I was doing you know, Instagram. It was very, very solo. I was a super solo founder. So I think the biggest thing for me in Web3 coming in like, as an artist and a founder is really focusing on the community aspect. So Exchange Arts has been around for two years now. We've just celebrated our second anniversary. Um, what we offer is commerce capabilities, amongst other things. So artists can realize commerce on our platform from uh, running auctions to buy nows, offers. And we do that multi-chain. Apart from that, we grew a fairly huge um, product in the past two years. So um, anyone can curate an exhibition, for example, really easy. Um, uh, people can do airdrops. I mean, there, there are a lot of features to discover on Exchange Art, but what I think it's really the opportunity here is Web3 and Solana and Exchange Art are offering artists a lot more opportunities for ownership and control over their art. And that's really meaningful for artists. And then there's also the flexibility aspect where artists can and have direct creative input on their artwork, which is, again, a freedom and an opportunity for them in Web3. We're also talking about higher margins, because in Web3 and Exchange Art, an artist keeps 95% of a sale um, of an art, of a, of a piece of art, whereas in traditional art world, they only keep between 20 to 50%, if they are lucky, of that price. Um, and we are also talking about royalties. I mean, it's been the keyword of the year. Open sea royalties, blur royalties, and everyone else royalties. Um, in media, we respect royalties. Artists can earn um, their safe, their, their, they can make a living on exchange art, and they can count on us for always protecting and standing, standing up for royalties. And last but not least, um, the opportunity here with Exchange Art and with Solana and blockchain is the fact that the environment is open and it's inclusive, which opens up the space for artists for a lot of opportunities um, compared to, to the traditional um, art world that we know. Amazing. So basically what I'm hearing is that a Web3 artist has some key differences um, between them and a, an artist who's maybe functioning in the Web2 ecosystem, uh, which is they have more ownership over their art, they have more of a say in where their art goes next, um, and they have the opportunity to reach a more global audience, maybe easier than they would in a more traditional Web2 capacity. Yeah? Indeed, yeah. So what I'd love for us to dive into is how can an artist who's, uh, maybe we have some artists who are considering building on Solana here in the audience or listening in on the live stream today, let's dive into how those artists could connect with the community here on Solana. What are some opportunities there for them? Where should they start? Um, so yeah, we're working, that's something, uh, kind of a new path for us. We recently hosted uh, one of our first onboarding workshops where I invited a lot of my friends, people I know, artists from, from traditional artists, and showed them how to make a Twitter, a Discord, a Phantom Wallet, Exchange Art Account, and, and really make their first NFT. Um, and I know Kay bought one of, the, one of the pieces. I think two of the artists that attended have already sold over like $500 worth. That's so amazing. It's, it's amazing to see kind of them understand about NFTs to then being able to pay rent with their NFTs, with their art. Um, so that's one thing that we're focusing on quite heavily, is kind of educating people how to get into this space, because there's a lot of information. I remember when I got into NFTs, it was like, YouTube, what's, what's a wallet? You know what I mean? Like, so confusing. Um, and then the opportunities, we, we host exhibitions every month, and that's really there to, to kind of boost people into the space and show them these are new artists in the space, to the collectors that are attending, attending the events. Amazing. And, and what about you, Larissa? I know that there are a lot of artists on exchange art that are maybe new to the space. How are they able to connect to the global community? 
So there is a myriad of things that we do, trying to explain a bit better the space and help artists grow into the space. And our interests are aligned because our business model is, depends on artists making a living on our platform. So in terms of that, if you check our YouTube channel, for example, um, we have lots of interviews with other successful artists in Solana that were kind enough to share their stories and their learnings. Um, and that's a nice way to start, to understand a bit um, how, how this world runs. Then we have lots of information and valuable um, knowledge that we share on our blog. Artists can get in touch with us at any time. We are running workshops. We are, as if there is demand for us to explain anything, we'll be there and we'll, we'll present and we'll, we'll explain how, how things work. We grew with this space in the past two years. So everything that we learned from artists, we shared back to other artists and so on and so forth. And that's how we grew this space. So we are always happy to share what we learned and how the space runs, because it's a dynamic market. What worked six months ago for an artist won't work today. Um, it's, but the basis, the, the fundamentals remain the same. And we have lots of resources out there. And we intend to put out a lot more. I love that. Um, Bangers, you're an artist that came from Web 2 to Web 3. Have you found the community to be welcoming? What's your take been? Oh yeah, big time. No, <laughs> the community, the community is amazing. I am so lucky to say that I've met like literally some of my absolute best friends through this ecosystem. So that's awesome. And I think like the advice like I would give for new artists starting out is to just dive in overall, like say yes to doing things that might make you uncomfortable, right? Like I remember starting off on Twitter, right? Completely fresh and having to put myself out there in spaces to meet people. And I think there's way more opportunities now than there was two years ago, which is amazing. So I really think it's about putting yourself out there, saying yes to new things. And it's also about collecting and contributing to the community. Like this space is about relationships that you have with others. It's about supporting other creators. It's about supporting communities and adding and exchanging value. So I think immerse yourself. And eventually I think you'll find a way to do Web3 in your own way, in your own style. And yeah, trust the process because there's a lot of learning that has to happen. You know, it's, it's quite complicated, <laughs> this kind of technology and really what we're doing. And it's not something that, you know, might be super simple to understand right away. But I think committing to the journey of learning and growing in a different, you know, different kind of medium and ecosystem is definitely the way to go about it. I love it. Definitely stick with it. And people will help you. People want people to succeed in this ecosystem. That's something that I've definitely seen. Um, I know we, uh, I want to pivot and talk about collectors, but before we do that, I wanted to talk, uh, Jerome and Larissa, the different kinds of art that you guys see, I know, Jerome, you are um, part of CODA, which is more of an event-based uh, mm -hmm. project, so you see a lot of different artists come and display, and Larissa, of course, you have all sorts of artists who are coming and minting on exchange art and be actively participating. What kind of art are they creating? Because I feel like there's a, a misunderstanding of it has to just be uh, digital art, like you're creating it digitally uh, on screen and then immediately minting it. But I've seen sculptors, painters, all kinds of mediums represented in the ecosystem on different projects. So I'd love for you guys to touch on, on that. Um, yeah, I mean, every month we, we open submissions. So with, uh, with my my team of collect, uh, curators, we, we go through and we, we see all the different pieces of art, but it's not strictly to, to digital art. You know, there's ph photography, animation, illustrations, paintings, like everything. And I think that's one thing that's kind of misunderstood is you can literally, if you take a photo of yeah. a piece of art or you scan it, you can, you can make an NFT out of it or even like a 3D model of a sculpture you know we've had um we had one we had peanuts sculpture in one of the exhibitions and that was really cool like in the virtual exhibition it's kind of like sims but with art on the wall so Fine. you can walk around and do flips and stuff but to have his piece like as a sculpture in the in the space was really cool that's awesome so on exchange art Look, you're making me drop alpha now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so on exchange art, we've seen as a natural evolution of 
um, artists realize in commerce that some artists are selling their canvas or some artists may be selling merch or sculptures or all sorts of other forms of physical art. So a natural evolution for us will be to enable um, storefronts and physicals next year. Oh. <laughs> Yes, so, so artists are doing that. Right now, it's a bit of a cumbersome process for them because we are optimized for digital only. But that's coming. That's super exciting. I love that. Thanks for sharing <laughs> that with us. Um, and Bangers, you actually, I saw downstairs, you guys actually have an on-site virtual reality experience now where you can see physical art in the space that's not, of course, physically here with us, mm -hmm. but it feels that way. Could you touch a little bit on that? Yeah, so what we're doing at Threeland, it is very much digital art, right? Like, as an artist, I'm kind of obsessed with the intersection of art and technology. I think it's really cool, and I think, like, this digital medium that we're doing with NFTs really opens the doors for creators to make new kinds of digital experiences. And yeah, this exhibition that we're doing, um, which you guys should definitely come check out, we're downstairs. It's basically like it's mixed reality, right? So you put on this headset and you see the world through cameras and now there's digital overlays. And those overlays, like those are NFTs by talented Solana artists in three land. So you're kind of in this digital room, people can visit the room online, and it's kind of like this mix <laughs> and blend of realities. If you haven't tried mixed reality, it is, it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool piece of tech. So yeah, I guess like when I look at kind of like art, I guess in Web3, I'm more excited about the kinds of mediums that allow you as a creator to do new kinds of things that wouldn't be possible even like in Web2, right? Because like, I, I do 3D, like I'm a 3D artist too, so I think it's, it's cool to experience in that medium, whereas when I was on Instagram, I was just only able to really show 2D and like a flat screen, right? So there's different things that you can do here with digital art, and I think that definitely you know, elevates the experience for a collector as well. Okay, so the TLDR is if you're an artist, no matter what medium you're in, you're able to mint your work on Solana and there's going to be a community. Totally. If there's not a community already, you're going to create it and you're going to gain traction at a global scale easier than you would in Web2. Totally. Um, and I'm gonna make a really smooth pivot here. People love to collect all of those kinds of art. So speaking of those collectors, and I'd love for you to touch on this first, Larissa, um, as I know you have experience in the traditional world, so you've seen the way that collectors function there and in Web3 and the benefits that they have being a collector in the Web3 world. I'd love for you to touch on the issue of provenance and uh, essentially for those following, that's essentially tracking the history of a piece of art, who's owned it before, and then being able to prove that it's then yours in a maybe more succinct way than they would have in the traditional world. I would love for you to explain maybe the background of that and why. Sure. So provenance, it's really important for collectors. And Web3 facilitates that. In the Web2, Web2 world, I mean, in the traditional art world, in order to establish and or to find out what's the provenance of a piece, it takes a lot of networking, I guess. <laughs> um, the information is not freely available. And it's usually... Um, um, Gate kept, I guess, by different stakeholders or entities. Now, what Web3 uh, brings is visibility over that, which, I mean, the keyword for that is transparency. And for any piece that is sold on Exchange Art, you can clearly see from the second it was minted to everything that has ever happened to that piece. And that's really valuable for collectors. Now, the transparency, it's a double-edged sword for collectors because they also like anonymity. Um, but that's something that we deal well on exchange art and collectors can benefit from, from that. Apart from transparency, Web3 also offers um, freedom of commerce. What happens um, a lot of time in fine art or high art is that collectors are not exactly allowed to sell freely their pieces at whatever prices they want, when they want, and how they want it. They need to go through certain um, stakeholders in the space. Whereas Web3 encourages quite a lot freedom and flexibility. Um, so freedom of commerce, it's, it's an opportunity that collectors have in this space to uh, buy and sell their pieces whenever they want and how they want it. Apart from that, um, 
also, I think it's really important and valuable for collectors how open and inclusive the space is. And not only for a social reason, but um, if they want to collect a piece and they're trying to get into an auction house during an auction, let's say a morning um, auction or an evening one, it's really tough to get in because there's a limited number of seats in that room and the auction house is optimizing um, to, to um, allocate the seats to people that are most likely to buy that evening. Now, Web3 offers this huge opportunity where they can participate in any auction they like and they can acquire any piece whenever they like, which I think it's, it's great and really valuable for collectors. It's an incredible opportunity, too. Like you were saying, Bangers, earlier, there's room within the Web3 space and, of course, the Solana ecosystem to be a pioneer in different kinds of art and to explore new things. And in order to get a seat at the table in Web2, oftentimes it can be very difficult if you don't know the right people, if you don't have the right connections. Exactly. It's almost like pay to play, whereas here it's the great equalizer. And, of course, in Web3, we're all about the decentralization of power and opening up opportunities that you wouldn't normally have. Um, but it's just really really exciting to see that that's happening now with this technology. Um, so you're a curator at, at CODA, Jerome. Can yeah. you, are you, have you uh, had a lot of experience with the collector side of things, or is it mainly the, been the artists? Yeah. Um, I mean, I collect quite a fair amount of art myself as well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, I think that's an interesting side to have, because I'm also a photographer as well. So I have like the two kind of the viewpoints of it as an artist side and then also the collector side. Um, but I think on touching on the collector side, like a lot of, I do talk to a lot of collectors. Every month we invite a guest curator to help us curate the exhibition. And typically we go for someone who's, you know, always collecting a lot of art. Um, and I think one of the main points about kind of collectors in the space is you're supporting someone that's putting their creation out there, you know, and they're, putting, they're, they're being vulnerable by putting their art out there. And if you buy it, if you share it, if you tweet it, it's, it's, you're, you're supporting people. Um, and I think without, without artists, there wouldn't be collectors, but without collectors, there wouldn't, there wouldn't really be artists. You know, you need one for the other. Um, so, th yeah, it's, it's an important, play, important role to play. And... Uh, I think we, it's kind of kind of looked over in some ways, you know. I think it's yeah. that's something that needs to change is is supporting collectors more as well. Yeah, a hundred percent. Larissa, have you found in exchange art and in your the conversations between artists and collectors that you guys facilitate? Have you found that there's been um, a learning curve or a growing curve with the collectors who maybe previously had done more of a traditional art? Uh, collection role in Web2 and how they've maybe provided feedback on their experience in the Web3 world? There's certainly a learning curve. Um, as with any new environment, right? If you collect modern art compared to collecting 20th century art, there is a learning curve between these two, just as it is between those two and digital art. So it's just kind of another niche, um, another medium, if you'd like. Uh, we are trying to facilitate that as much as possible. Um, but yeah, th there is a bit of a learning curve there. <laughs> At the end of the day, the fundamentals are more or less the same. You collect what you like. And also, I've, I know we only have a few minutes left, but something that also seems to maybe initially confuse people who are joining, whether they're an artist or a collector, um, and again, the, the community is always around to ask questions, exchange art. You mentioned that um, your team is always around helping artists and collectors who are maybe new to the Web3 space coming over from Web2. Um, oh, where was I going with this? Why <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, well, I saw it. But uh, I wanted to know about specifically uh, where can they, oh, yes, this is where I was going, the art. So where it's stored and where they can access it. So that's very different from a more traditional medium. Um, I know, Bangers, you have operated pr primarily in digital art. So those who have uh, more of a digital native experience uh, may not necessarily feel this as a challenge. But for example, sculptors or painters, um, either the artist creating those physical pieces and then the collectors who are then purchasing them, how is that ownership experience different than in the Web2 space? I mean, it takes a bit of learning to understand a digital asset because we are just talking about digital assets at the end of the day. Um, 
But I think it gets to a point where if they see, for example, how they see them on the screens here, and that's why we've been doing a lot of events last year, is they see, when they see the, the frames, the mural frames, for example, and the artwork on them, they actually realize that's something that they would love in their home, and they realize the opportunity of actually displaying multiple pieces and just being flexible about that instead of one static image um, on, on them. And then there is, of course, sometimes the discussion goes about um, utility as it goes, because um, when they first are faced with this, they think it can just sit in their wallet on their phone and be just one of the pictures in their wallet. And when they, they either see the screens or they can see the physical counterparts of them, be it um, a canvas, as I said, or merch, or any other sculpture, any other physical object, they understand that there is a correlation um, but yeah, I, f I think it's, it's just a learning curve and it takes a bit of time for collectors to get used to the ideas. But I think what I'm counting quite a lot on is the fact that generations that started with mine and younger are very used to collect um, skins, you know, like mm -hmm. all these games that we grew up with. Yeah. They are really open to that and for them it's, it's an asset and they understand it as such. So I think it, it will grow a lot as the generations are kind of Growing. I love it. You mentioned the word innovation. And so with our last minute, I would love for you guys to discuss. Well, for me, innovation correlates with the Solana ecosystem. It's a word that I connect with it. But I'd love for you guys to just very briefly discuss why you chose Solana as an artist, a collector, a curator. Yeah, of course. Um, I think it comes down to kind of what we touched on through like what we were talking about, kind of the community, the friends you make, everything like that, but also obviously the price. Um, it costs like a percentage of a, of a dollar to, to mint an artwork and then you can sell it for $100, $500, like that. Um, and then, yeah, I think the community as well. Like that's one huge part for me, meeting friends. I've, I've uh, met over the weekend, over this week, had a lot of fun, a bit too much drinking maybe, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but no, it's, 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 I think without that, it wouldn't feel the same. You know, to yeah. think, to look forward to real life events, to, to get on calls and to really find common, common values. I love that. Very briefly in a few words, bangers, Larissa, why Solana? It's only possible on Solana. Yes, <laughs> it's only possible on Solana. I can't do any shorter than that, <laughs> but <laughs> what I can say is for, I, for us it made a lot of sense because um, of how easy it is to use, so that helps a lot. Um, another point is that more than 80% of the population of the globe lives in emerging markets, and they can't yes. afford doing a lot of mistakes on Ethereum um, because of the costs. The, for them, these costs are prohibitive. So in this sense, um, the fact that Solana is cost-effective helps a lot, A, with onboarding, B, with um, um, allowing artists to experiment. I mean, they can, they can do mistakes, and, or they can just experiment and see what works for them without costing them the bank. I love it. Thank you guys so much for coming and listening to this panel, both here and online. Uh, we really appreciate it. And it's only possible on Solana. Okay. <laughs>